Good morning. Good morning. A warm welcome to each and every one of you as we've been gathered by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to hear him in his word to us today, to receive him in his holy supper, and to respond with our prayers and praises to our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Just a couple of notes uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, thank you to those of you who have uh, signed up to help uh, with McRest this week. Uh, maybe if you, if you did and maybe forgot, maybe just double check your uh, time slots in the back. There are still a couple slots that are open uh, uh, and many hands make light work. I think I especially noticed a Friday dinner maybe has a couple of slots and I uh, could use some extra help there. So please check that out. But again, thanks to all who have already signed up and are planning to serve this week. This may, doesn't maybe mean much for you here, but maybe if you know some folks who uh, often do come on Mondays, just a reminder, there is no worship tomorrow night uh, due to the Labor Day holiday. It has pleased our Lord uh, to call to himself uh, his servant Gail Burkholder uh, this past week. Uh, the funeral arrangements uh, are uh, for September 16th, so we keep uh, Richard in our prayers uh, this week and in the weeks ahead, um, and we will remember them um, in our prayers. Uh, please uh, note the number of dates that are listed in the news and notes here, the back-to-school jam, the auction, the rummage sale, uh, lots of things uh, coming up uh, where we can gather together uh, as the body of Christ and uh, rejoice in his goodness to us. Uh, let's greet each other with a wave as we begin uh, our worship.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Please kneel as you are able for a time of silent reflection on God's word and self-examination of our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. There is good news for you. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday.
let us pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 15. O Lord, you know. Remember me and visit me and take vengeance for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone, because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked, and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be conceited. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. We read together. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. 
Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, a privilege it is to gather together. You have given us this opportunity to hear your word again, to see our fellow Christians, to be built up in the faith, both by the word spoken here and by the example of those around us. We pray, Heavenly Father, now that you would let us ever walk with Jesus, that by your goodness we too may bear our cross to bring him praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, God's ways take surprising turns in life, don't they? We like to think we sometimes got to figure out how God's going to work, well, then pretty soon we find out it's not the way we expect it. Jeremiah himself, the prophet, experienced it. He received the call of the Lord to speak his word to the people. People did not eagerly receive it. Matter of fact, they rejected it. And they caused Jeremiah problems. He was thrown into jail. He was beaten. He had to watch the destruction of his homeland. He had to watch the destruction of the temple, the very place he had come to worship and to try to proclaim that it might be spared. But God did not work in the way he expected it. We have that happen. Maybe not in the dramatic fashion of Jeremiah. But so often our prayers seem not to be heard, and we wonder what God is doing. Sometimes we want to call out what Jeremiah does several times in his book. Lord, you have tricked me. Because things are not as easy or as smooth in our lives as we might expect. Jeremiah experienced it. So do we. And Peter learned it too. The reading of the gospel today takes place immediately after last week's. Jesus asked him, who do you say that I am? And Peter proclaimed on behalf of all the apostles, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus pro proclaims back, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, which means son of John. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And from that time on, Jesus began to teach them. He began to teach them that he was going to be mistreated by, in Jerusalem, by the Pharisees and the excuse me, by the Pharisees and chief priests and by the Sadducees, that they would make sure he was killed, but he would rise again on the third day. He taught them that oh, day after day. And finally, Peter seems to be have enough through this whole thing. I can almost see Peter coming up to Jesus, putting his arm around him and guiding him away from the other disciples. And saying, Jesus, you really don't get it. This will never happen to you. So stop talking about it. It's done. We need to hear a different message. But then we get Jesus' severe reaction, right? It's harsh. Get behind me, Satan. The very words that Peter is uttering in some kind of pious thought are satanic. They are motivated not by the things of God, but they're motivated by the devil himself. It's the way of thinking of this world, not of God, and definitely not of Jesus. Suffering, death, rejection, that can't be the way of God. And yet, it's exactly what Peter learned. It is the way of God. It's the way of our salvation. And look what he did. Look what Jesus did. He denied himself, didn't he? He did the will of his Father, not himself. He prayed in the garden, Lord, let this cup be removed from me. I don't want to go through the suffering, but your will be done. Not his. Not what he by his flesh was feeling, but rather what God, his Father, desired. And what he desired was for Jesus to take up his cross. And he did. 
And on the cross, he cried out, sounding a little bit like Jeremiah, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, here's bearing the cross. It's taking on the fullness of sin. It's taking on the fullness of the wrath of God. It's having it all poured out on you, what should be on, on Jesus, what should be on us. He denied himself. He took up his cross. And yet, through it all, he trusted. He trusted in his Father in heaven. The people would come and they would mock Jesus. You could save others, now save yourself, they would say to him. Come down from that cross and show us who you truly are. It's the words of Peter put a little differently. It's the words motivated by Satan. It's the way of thinking of men. Jesus could have done that, make no mistake. Could have come down and wiped out those people. Yet he did not avenge himself at all. He did not take it into his own hands. He entrusted himself to his Father. Into your hands I commit my spirit. That was Jesus' final prayers. And the Father did take care of Jesus. The Father raised Jesus from the dead in the power of the Spirit. His death, well, that was payment for our sins. His resurrection was our justification and opened up the gates of heaven for you and me. What a great gift it is that while we were still enemies of God, Christ died for you and for me. This is not the way we would expect God to act. It's exactly what God did. For it was necessary, Jesus said. It was necessary for the chosen one of God, the elect one of God, the very one that God said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. It is on this one that God has chosen to work through the cross. And that's a good thing. For that is our way of salvation. And there is no alternative. Peter was surprised. Because he was thinking the things of men. And it was revealed to him what he thought was sounding so pious was really satanic. But then he was in for another surprise. For Jesus began to teach the disciples something else. He talked to them very simply, didn't he? If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. If any man would gain his life in this world, he's going to lose it eternally. But if he loses his life now, he will have gained eternity. You see, what Jesus is saying, the way of the Christian, the way of the chosen ones of God, is still the cross. And that surprises even more. Because there's a little bit of Peter in all of us. And we don't want the mark of a Christian to be the cross. We want it to be one of continual triumphant glory with dreams of grandeur. We want to see the message of Jesus wipe out paganism in our world. But the problem is, the way it works is through the cross and through suffering. Peter and all of us need to learn the mark of the Christian life. For we have been chosen by God. We have been brought as his own in baptism. We are his, and so we are marked by the cross of Christ. We take up our cross as we deny ourselves and we walk with Jesus. That's what Jesus says, right? If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself. That's hard because that's a word of repentance. But faith is lived in repentance. What it means is we have to deny the things of our world. We have to deny the desires of our flesh. We have to deny the lusts and the desires and the things that our world say are exacting and are important and how we should identify ourselves. When we deny ourselves, for by ourselves, well, we sound like Peter. 
Lord, I want to follow you, but on my terms, not on yours. But then we do something odd. We kneel before our God. We say, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities. And we deny ourselves. And we take up our cross. Now, we don't necessarily die for another, though we might be called in that. But we do take up our cross. And if you want to know what that cross looks like in your life, look at the Romans passage from today. There's the cross in your life. There's denying yourself and walking after Jesus. For it is not an easy thing to see, but there it is. We serve others, and we forgive as we have been forgiven. And we do not avenge our own sin, or the sin that's done against us, but we wait upon God to do what he sees as fit and just. The world will look at it and say, you are fools. You're doormats. Why would anybody live to forgive the one who has hurt them? Why would anybody bless the one that is cursing them? Why would anybody call others to repentance through their faith and their example. It's a cross we bear because it makes Christians look odd in this world, and that's what we are. But we stand following Jesus. And that's what Jesus spoke from the cross too, right? As they nailed him, Father, forgive them, for they know not what we do. You see, this is the thing we as Christians do. Our world is blind, it is ignorant, it is spiritually dead. So it's not going to understand confessing sins. It's not going to be understanding the desires that are denied, whether they be physical or mental. But what they're going to see is an oddity. But we are called to do one thing. To deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. And we commit ourselves and the problems of this world into God's hands. And he will avenge us in his day, in his time, in his way. Jeremiah learned that. Jesus experienced it. And the promise for you and for me is as sure as it was for Jesus. It's hard to stand in opposition to this world. It's hard to fight our own sinful desires. We look weak and we feel weak. We look vacillating to a world that expects us to take a stand on every silly thing that comes along like it is the ultimate. It may be odd and strange. And they may think us that way. But the world thought the same of Jeremiah and Peter and Jesus. But God watched over each and every one of them and cared for them. You see, this is the life you and I have. This is the life we've received in the waters of our baptism as we were called by name to be followers of Jesus. It is life under the cross of Jesus, and it is blessed by Christ. The life we live now is lived by faith, not by sight. The life we live now is the life of Christ in us. For we have been baptized into his death and we have been raised with him that we might live and act as Jesus does. No longer letting sin rule over us, but rather the love of Christ. And all the time what we do is simple. We thank God. For his cross is enough. Because if it wasn't, we'd be in trouble. Because there's none in this room that carries the cross that has been placed on us as we ought. We seek revenge on our own. We don't deny our flesh as often as we ought. And we definitely don't like to bless those who have cursed us. But Jesus bore in his body. He bore in his body our sin that he might live in us to the praise of his glory.
You see, God does act in surprising ways. Maybe it shouldn't surprise us. Most of us have heard this good portion of our lives. But yet it still does, because his ways are not our ways. His mind is not ours. But we still trust, because we know this truth. Jesus bore in his body on that cross our sin. It is the cross that the Father has chosen for him. And now we walk in the way that Jesus has cleared for us to follow. And we know this, that he is with us every step of the way. It may be surprising again and again to our minds. It may be surprising to our world. But it is God's way of working. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. To God alone be all glory. Amen. Please rise. be seated uh, at this service. Uh, we will, in a few moments, uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper. We invite you uh, during the offering time to take a look at the uh, notes in our bulletin about that. A reminder, if you're a member in good standing here at St. John or at a sister LCMS congregation, you're welcome to come forward to receive the body and blood of Christ. Uh, if you don't fit one of those two categories but still want to come forward to receive a blessing from the Lord, uh, come forward with uh, your hand over your heart and we will leave a blessing with you. At this time, you're invited to uh, bring your offerings forward as well as fill out the pews, uh, the pads in the pews. Please stand for prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, open wide our hearts to one another. Let love be genuine, speech truthful, and patience constant among us. 
Let us commend ourselves and everything as those known by God's love and therefore unashamed to serve one another and all those around us. Grant an increase of faith, hope, and love, we pray, to us here at St. John and to our brothers and sisters in Christ at Mount Calvary in Detroit. May our minds and theirs always be set on your ways above the ways of this world. We also lift before your throne of grace the following families of our congregation this week, Jim and Debbie Shields, John and Lori Shields and family, Charles and Darlene Shoebottom, Nancy Schultz, and Larry and Charlotte Shore. Grant that as they and all of us take up our crosses and follow Jesus, many might be led to glorify you, our Father in heaven, and receive your eternal blessings in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you have made us feast on your word to the delight of our hearts. Keep us steadfast in the face of those who despise your word and inspire the pastors of your church to boldly proclaim what is most precious, the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Bless the pastors, teachers, and lay leaders of our congregation. We thank you for their dedicated service and pray your blessing upon those who now or in the future will further their education in order to enhance their service to your church. We pray for President Harrison of the LCMS and President Davis of the Michigan District as well, that your word would be their constant delight, that they would lead us to delight in the true confession and bold witness of your name. Lord, in your mercy, preserve our nation, state, and region, and all their leaders, and all who serve for the good of our people and for their protection. Grant us and all people joy in their labor and dedication in their various vocations, that we might do all things as serving both our neighbors and you. Grant peace in our time, O Lord, and may the gospel of peace have free course and find fertile soil in our hearts and in all hearts here in the Detroit area and around the world. Grant safety to those who protect us, police, firefighters, EMTs, and the military, that their labor would truly serve us and our neighbors, and grant your protection this weekend as well, O Lord, to those who travel near and far, and return them safely to their homes. Lord, in your mercy. Great Physician, we pray that you would heal and restore your people in body, mind, and soul. We especially lift before you today James Pfizer and DeWall and his family and friends as he is critically ill. We lift before you all from our congregation who have requested our prayers and those we now name in our hearts. We also pray for Richard Burkholder and the whole family of Gail Burkholder and the family of Mary and Barone as they mourn their deaths. Comfort them with the sure and certain hope of the resurrection and life everlasting with you. Give them all your holy care and strength to bury their crosses, that they may endure to see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O Lord, lead us to repentance and faith that we might not think more highly of ourselves and his right, but that we would set our hearts and minds on the things of God. Prepare us to receive the blessed gifts of our Lord's table, by which you preserve us holy and blameless in Christ until he comes again. Preserve especially, we pray, those who are persecuted for the name of your Son, Jesus. In communion with all your saints, grant us endurance to bear our crosses as Christ bore his for us. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. 
Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.